Welcome to Chromatic Thought, the podcast that links philosophy to music. Music has a way of transporting us to different worlds of emotion. We often link specific songs with emotionally intense memories, and I know when I'm in a certain mood, I'll turn to music to either really lean into that feeling or use it as levity to pull me out of it. Music provides sort of this reset from the pressures and immediacy of the world, being able to just vibe with it in a liminal space. And that is freeing. I asked some of my friends if they've experienced this too, and what songs elicit it. Yeah, I guess off the top of my head, I would say Telepatia by Caliucci's Summer in Your Eyes by Alma Grace. It's called Meet Me at Our Spot by Willow Smith. Oh, I really like that one. But how can we really define freedom? Simone de Beauvoir analyzes what constitutes human freedom in her book, The Ethics of Ambiguity, published in 1947. Beauvoir's idea of freedom is this spontaneous internal drive that must exist for itself while also contending with the external weight of the world. Every human encompasses their own freedom, but the actual effort towards practicing one's freedom helps generate it even more. She also thinks that the ultimate freedom is that which helps others be free. So what does this have to do with music? So many songs have come out lately that I feel are existential. And one of my favorite musical artists, Mitski, has historically created, in my mind, philosophically themed music. Mitski is a Japanese-American singer-songwriter who's released five albums since 2012. Her music falls under the indie rock pop art genre, um, with usually a melancholy undertone. No matter how you categorize them, though, her songs are filled with emotion. Some of the ones that are more well-known in popular media right now include Nobody, which is based around searching for a connection and finding loneliness despite being surrounded by people, as well as I Bet on Losing Dogs about losing mental battles. Mitski most recently came out with a new song on October 5th, 2021, called Working for the Knife. It's about the biting aspects of reality. It's not super carefree, but this song totally connects to Simone de Beauvoir's idea of existential freedom. And if you keep listening, I'll explain why. Mitski has said that her new song is about, quote, being confronted with a world that doesn't recognize your humanity and seeing no way out, end quote. This song was released two years after Mitski declared an indefinite hiatus from music. She deleted all social media and sort of disappeared, but now she's back. To me, Mitski's song uniquely captures a sort of existential attitude about the process of living and creating. Mitski grapples with her sense of freedom in Working for the Knife, which I feel is quite succinctly described by Beauvoir in the first pages of The Ethics of Ambiguity. The 20th century French philosopher says humans try to assert themselves as, quote, pure internality against which no external power can take hold. And they also experience themselves as a thing crushed by the dark weight of other things, end quote. This is such a raw and powerful quote. It illuminates the desire that people have in exercising their freedom to create their own realities alongside the weighted pressures they face in doing so, an experience that I feel Mitski puts to music. Her song engages with the purpose of work and one's satisfaction with the trajectory of their life. Now, Beauvoir says that freedom is not a fixed quality or a thing that is given. We all have it, but we have to actually assume our freedom via action to fully legitimize it. And it's not a whim of simply doing what you want when you want. Beauvoir describes that freedom requires work and effort to realize, and it constantly needs to be renewed and engaged with. Mitski takes freedom into her own hands by coming back and actually releasing a new song despite the circumstances which presumably caused her to take a pause, namely the overbearing grind of the industry. In her latest song, she speaks about feeling limited by this entity she labels the knife, but she paradoxically defies it by writing and releasing the song. Her actions speak for themselves, expressing her freedom. And through this paradox, listeners can realize how attaining one's freedom is an effortful process, but taking concrete action is positive. Another important tenet of Beauvoir's idea of true freedom is that it works towards ensuring the freedom of others, 
At this point in time, the music video for Working for the Knife has over two and a half million views, and the multitude of comments, about 26,000, under Mitski's video seem to support the fact that her song has resonated with an audience. Mitski sharing her sentiments on life via this new song is, in a way, a gift of freedom to others, since it allows them to potentially recognize themselves in the struggles depicted in the song, reflect on their own form of existence, and then do something about it. So what exactly does Mitski say in this comeback? How do her lyrics reinforce or reflect existential freedom? We're now going to listen to it and discuss. Okay, so we first hear this intro, which to me is reminiscent of Cogs in a Wheel, a modern steampunk feel of the clink and grind of a well-oiled machine, or even a worker punching in and out for the day. And just a quick visual aside, in the music video, Mitski enters in a cowboy hat, wearing a blue silk pantsuit under a long coat, and later in the video she's wearing a red bra with the blue bottoms. Hello American flag and the corporate work system in the USA. Are you really the land of the free, or existentially free at least? We'll see. Okay, so we leap into her first lyrics. She's lamenting that she isn't making things, which is sort of paradoxical because she has obviously created her own music in coming out with this song. The I wish I was making things too line shows us the intrinsic draw towards creation, towards freedom that Beauvoir says we all harbor. But because she's working for the knife, Mitski feels held back. The knife can be interpreted as an unfulfilling 9 to 5 job, or simply the pressures of externality that crush freedom's vitality and drive. Being caught in the affair of everyday life has seemed to squelch Mitski's freedom. However, at this point in the music video, Mitski does this cool dance move that flips the cowboy hat off her head and onto the floor. Her last album was called Be the Cowboy with the premise of taking on the unapologetic arrogance of cowboys seen in Western movies. This was during a time when Mitski said she struggled to claim space as an Asian American woman in the music industry. I see this spurning of her hat in Working for the Knife as a rejection of her old era, or at least a signifier that she's moving on, and that she can take up space truly as she is without any external prop of confidence. With this visual choice, Mitski begins exercising her freedom and taking the future into her own hands. Beauvoir says that a creator's, quote, present project embraces the past and places confidence in the future to come. At each moment, freedom is confirmed through all creation, end quote. In visually referencing her past album, Mitski nods to her past, recognizing that it helped her get to where she is today as an artist, but she's ready to move on. And despite the tendency of this song's lyrics to sort of wade in the past, Mitski's actions of creating the new piece affirm her freedom moving forward. Okay, on to the next bit. This part reminds me of Beauvoir's idea that people determine their own freedom as much as they do the freedom of others. Beauvoir says, and I quote again, Freedom, in order to fulfill itself, requires that it emerges into an open future. End quote. Other people allow or deny someone to constructively participate in this open future. So it makes sense how Mitski has felt defeated by people's lack of interest in her stories, her songs, pursuits, which may have held her back from further creation during her hiatus. At the same time, however, Mitski is caught up in the lie that externalities determine her value and the freedom that she has to put her stories into the world. Since each one of us is free, each individual is responsible for their own actions, through which they develop their values. In this sense, external values have the possibility of denying someone else their freedom. Here, that's other people dictating which stories are worth hearing or not, and therefore placing value on 
which stories Mitski can tell or not. Perhaps also the no good guys line also represents that there's no inherent meaning in life. We have to create our own, which Mitski is trying to do. So in this section, Mitski says she starts the day, maybe the beginning of her artistic career, so high with all of these aspirations, but it ends so low because of the knife. Beauvoir emphasizes that freedom must retain genuine spontaneity, and if spontaneity is shattered or stolen, freedom dissipates too. Mitski seems to have given up on her vision and feels left behind in the past. While the world carries on, her perceived lack of freedom kept her stuck. But in reality, failure doesn't deny freedom. Beauvoir says, quote, It is not a question of giving someone time and happiness. It is not a question of stopping the movement of life. It is a question of fulfilling it. So according to Beauvoir, Mitski doesn't need the world to wait for her. She just needs to continue exercising her freedom in a way that's meaningful. Okay, this verse is super important. It gets at Beauvoir's idea of ambiguity. Even though you can't change the earthly circumstances of facticity or this oppression of the knife, the existential idea of ambiguity is that you can still live freely within it. The word change in Mitski's lyrics is critical. It signifies the conversion that Beauvoir talks about, that people's free existence is what creates values. Instead of being forced to be nose to the grindstone working for this knife, Now Mitski says she's living for it. She recognizes that, yes, she's stuck within worldly conditions and factors that challenge her freedom, but she can make the most within her situation. Additionally, this is where Mitski compares her past with her potential future. And although she seems to see her current life as a monotony, all appearing the same, that could simply be the nothingness that exists between one's past and future. That nothing, Beauvoir describes, is one's freedom. If Mitski acts right now, not even wait till 30, she'll still be engaging with her freedom. Finally, we have the last verse. Humans have the freedom to make whatever choice they want. Pulling a tiny bit from Sartre, the power of choice is what helps us realize our freedom. The fact that we can do one thing or another thing means we know our actions aren't limited. Mitski implies that she made the wrong choice towards pursuing her goals in the past. But the first line, the choice was mine, still holds true. In this moment, only she has the freedom to shape her future. Beauvoir suggests not to dwell on failures and to see them simply instead as the opening of opportunities for new freedom, which Mitski now has the chance to do. Beauvoir declares that existence is ambiguous, saying its meaning is never fixed, that it must constantly be won. Freedom is verified through constant concrete action, which allows for a renewal of the moment. So failed past attempts at something aren't a waste or a reason to quit, but rather a new avenue and opportunity towards freedom. You're not beholden to your past, which Mitski demonstrates in the beginning of the music video by throwing off the cowboy hat. Finally, we've made the progression to dying for the knife. At first, it may sound like a contradiction to Mitski's progress of exploring her freedom, but if we look at it under an existential lens, this line could be freeing. Realizing under the thumb of this metaphorical knife that there's no given meaning in life, The idea may be that as soon as we're born, we're dying under the conditions of this world. Could be freeing. Without the need to fulfill preconceived notions of how to live, the inevitability of death allows one to make life what they will. 
Lastly, the ending of this music video is telling. When the song ends, we hear claps and cheers, but Mitski is on stage in an empty auditorium. She continues dancing and jumping around, signifying that she's exhausting herself for others, for the knife. She dances wildly, perhaps feeling like she needs to exploit her own pain and personal struggles to be successful within the music industry. But then we hear a ding and the scene shifts. There's no more applause, and Mitski begins moving in even more funky and erratic ways. She still puts immense energy into her movement, but it seems like now she's dancing more for herself, pounding out her frustration at the system, while at the same time feverishly reveling in her own realized freedom that's stemming entirely from within. The scene ends with her lying on the floor, breathing heavily as she looks over at the camera with a smile. She's just finished performing an intense artistic endeavor, not only in this music video, but in her life and career. She's come back into the music industry after a voluntary hiatus, and although it's no doubt a struggle, the little smile we see is perhaps a glimmer of hope towards Mitski's contentment with herself and the actions she can take to affirm her freedom, taking her next step into continuing to make music. Thanks for tuning in to Chromatic Thought. This podcast is written, edited, and produced by Emma Paulini.